Good in the day, bad at night. These garden gnomes have a surprise in store. Today I'm going to take two common lawn ornaments and combine them to create a new, more evil gnome. Okay, let's get started. I have here a box of garden gnomes that they caught in China and cryogenically preserved and put them in a box. You can get them at Harbor Freight for three for about six bucks. And I also have here, which I want to roll off the table at the moment, I have two solar lights that uh, I bought from Home Depot. And they are about $2.50 a piece and they'll make a great power source for our gnomes. We have three gnomes. First guy has a watering can. We got this guy, he's a little perv. He seems to like uh, doing strange things with vegetables. This guy, he's holding a hoe, but maybe we can pretend that it's an ax because that's slightly creepier. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take a cordless drill we're going to drill holes into his eyes. <laughs> what I'm going to use to drill the eyes is a special type of bit that's designed for masonry and for glass. And what it has is a carbide piece here instead of a, a, a fluted spiral that you'd find in most drills. I don't know if you can see that end. I found that this works great for masonry and not at all really for glass. So. Uh, for glass, what you really want to use is a diamond bit. I'm going to start by drilling a hole through each of the gnome's eyes. The key here is you want to go slowly with not a lot of pressure so that you don't crack it. You want to make sure that your drill bit doesn't walk. With not very much pressure. Okay, so there's one hole and we'll just do the other. And now our gnome has holes where his eyes are. The next thing we're going to do is take a section of wire and strip the ends off. And to do that I'm going to use a wire stripper tool. And what this is is it's sort of like scissors that has a notch in each blade. And if you carefully close these, you can strip the insulation off without actually cutting through the conductor inside. I'm going to split the wire here. And just strip a small section off of each. And just like that. Now we'll take an LED and cut the lead short. An important thing to know about an LED is that uh, if you see here on this video, just got the reflection. I don't know if I can catch it again here. There, there's a flat spot next to one of the LEDs. What this is doing is indicating the polarity of the LED. You can also see that the wires on the LED are one, one is longer than the other. This also indicates the polarity. We're going to pay attention to that when we attach the wires. In our case, we're going to con connect the flat lead to the white striped wire. Now I'm going to take my soldering iron and apply a little bit of solder to the leads of the wire. The white wire will go on the flat side. So I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to my soldering tip. And I'm going to touch the wire to the LED very carefully. And just bring the soldering iron down to touch it. The way you want to do this is touch your soldering iron to the lead itself and then bring the solder in to touch it. This pre preheats the conductor and allows the solder to wick in much better. Now I'm going to take the gnome that I'm going to put this in. I'm going to measure a length of wire that should go to the eye and out of the bottom of the gnome just a little bit and cut it off there. So now we have one LED complete. 
I'm going to do the other LED just the same way. Now this is all ready to go. Now I'm going to take the gnome and I'm going to thread the wire down through the eye hole. And out of the feet. And with the LED in position, I'm going to take some hot glue to keep it locked into place. Just apply a little bit around the eye. And we'll do it with the other eye. So now we have our wires coming out of the, the feet of the gnome and I'm going to go ahead and strip the ends of those as well and attach them together so that the LEDs are wired in parallel. I'll go ahead and strip them. I'm stripping a longer length here because I want to twist the twist three wires together and just make it a lot easier. And I'm going to do this with the additional piece of wire that goes to the solar light as well. Before I go doing this, I'm going to cut some sections of shrink tube that I can slip over the wires to keep them from touching after I have soldered all of this together. So once again, I touch, I touch my soldering iron to the wires and bring the solder down and let it wick in. There we go, we have it soldered now. I'm just going to take and fold these over like this. Slip the heat shrink tubing over top of all that. Now that our heat shrink tubing is in place, I'm going to shrink it with a lighter. And what you don't want to do is hold your lighter there in place for a long time and really cook the heat shrink tubing. You just want to move it around, let it shrink. When you see that it's shrunk in a certain section, it's time to move on. There we go. Now the top side won't have been shrunk yet, so I'll just hit that as well. Great, and we'll do the other one. There we go. Now we're going to move on to our solar light. The first thing that we need to do is drill a hole in the uh, clear part so that we can get the wire out of, out of the solar light. I'm going to go ahead and slip the wire through this hole now. Now I'm going to take the remainder of my solar light and take it apart. There you have it, There's the battery is in here and we have one small circuit board that doesn't really have all that much on it. The solar cells are here, I have four solar cells. Each solar cell produces about 0.5 volts, so all together this is producing about two volts. Right here in the center is a cadmium sulfide cell and what this is is a light sensitive resistor. In any case, we're going to remove the circuit board. You want to be careful that you don't wiggle the wires too much otherwise they will break off from the circuit board. Now I have the LED exposed. Now I could leave the LED in here but we'll get longer run time if I take it out. What I'm going to do is just heat both leads up at the same time and get them red hot and then I should be able to just wiggle it out of there with my soldering iron. Now I'm going to quickly strip the end of the wire that I just slipped through the solar lights enclosure. I'm going to tin it. I'm going to apply a little solder to the end of it. One more thing, I need to drill a little hole through here so that I can sneak the, the wire through there as well. And I'll just connect them to the board. So now 
I'll just reattach the screws. Again, making sure to not wiggle the wires too much because otherwise they might break. And we'll reattach this to the top of the solar light. But as you can see here, we have now have a garden gnome, one solar light, and when it loses its light, the eyes light up red. One interesting suggestion that came from our writer, Mike Nathan, was that you could make the gnomes so that they are only evil when somebody gets close to them by having a passive infrared sensor. So whenever they detect motion, the eyes come on, and when it stops, they're off. So from a distance, it doesn't seem evil. They get close and you make them angry. So there you go. This is Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com with a simple project that you can do in an evening that takes a good gnome and turns it pure evil. <laughs>